Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the 48th episode of dirty chess tricks in this episode you are going to see a wonderful trick and a high profile trap in the king's indian attack from the white perspective now interesting part is critical tricky position can be reached with two different opening move order as you can see i have highlighted here however in this video i have choose the most popular choice namely e4 this trick can be effectively used in tournament practice against both french as well as e6 sicilian and it is such invisible that so far three grand masters and few title players have fallen into it we are now going to follow a game where a gm has been crushed by this beautiful trick here black start with the french defense e6 and white responds with the typical kia setup starting with d3 okay d5 on the board attacking on e4 and white calmly defend this with knight to d2 so as you can see i have highlighted by the arrows this opening is all about structure rather than proper move order so what white wants to do is he wants to play knight g to f3 followed by g3 and bishop to g2 and then castle on the king side after that white will put his rook on e1 and as you can see if black prematurely castle on the king side then white get a typical king side attack which is always a fun to play as a white Okay so let's see how grandmaster respond to this opening well some of the moves are very natural typical french defense move knight to f6 and after the move knight to f3 black obviously gain the space on the queen side with c5 okay no issues it doesn't bother white to go with his typical king's in an attack setup starting with g3 and after knight to c6 bishop to g2 as you can see black doesn't want to play bishop to d6 as it is not looking at the right direction so the correct move is bishop to e7 planning to castle on the king side at the right moment well white plan is very obvious he wants to castle now and if black castle at this point then as i have mentioned earlier white has this thematic plan in the picture which is very difficult to handle for the black camp so accordingly what most of the good black player does is they do not commit castle instantly and rather develop his rest of the army first and then at the right moment they castle so if you carefully look at black camp the only piece which hasn't developed is that poor bishop on c8 and accordingly the best choice here for the black is to continue with b6 and activate that light squared bishop okay rook to e1 square vacation for the knight and black plays the obvious move bishop to b7 here white choose the move c3 to restrict the knight movement and accordingly black respond with queen to c7 remain flexible stopping any e5 advance and at the right moment black can even castle on the queen side well guess what we have reached to the critical position and before i move on i like you to pause this video and find out what move you are going to play which sets up a nasty trick Well I hope you do find out this amazing resource E5 <laughs> What a move Well you may say hang on doesn't white blunder upon because after the simple move knight f to d7 black is attacking three times on e5 and funny enough there is no easy way to defend the e5 pawn 
Why? Let's see. Well, first obvious and a natural move d4 instantly fail due to the simple tactic c captures d4, c captures d4, and now this typical queenside knight jump, knight to b4. And as you can see, knight to c2 is on the card, which is not easy to parry. And if white's supposed to play moves like rook to f1, getting out of the fork, then he get this ultimate shock, bishop to a6. And I think game is over right there. Well, you may say, what about queen to e2? Doesn't it look so natural defending the e5 square? From all aspects, it looks so good. But black has this amazing attacking resource, g5. And you can see white is in a big danger as g4 is coming up. And as the knight will move away, the e5 pawn will drop. And most likely black is going to castle on the queen side which give him a very comfortable and in fact attacking position. So the big question arises: if none of these two moves are working, then how the hell on earth white is going to defend e5? Well, that's where our tricky continuation comes into the picture. And believe it or not, white here has this super calm move, knight to f1 which sets up a very huge cunning trap. First side, this looks completely stupid, right? Because you are not defending on e5 and if black wish, he can easily take on e5 square. That's the case in the database as there are more than 100 games played from this position where I'm afraid many white players doesn't know about this trap in detail. So pay special attention guys. My big question is, what happens if black just capture on e5? Kindly pause the video, take your time and find out what white is up to after this move. Okay, are you ready? Well, before we look at this, there is one point I like to mention that instead of capturing this pawn, if black plays other moves, let's say castle on the king side, then the simplest move is now d4 works because the same thing, c captures d4, c captures d4, and knight to b4 doesn't work this time as white has this saving resource, knight to e3. And in fact, this position is quite better for the white as it has a space in the center of the board and soon we are going to kick this knight and get a slightly advantageous position. That's okay, but what to do after black capture on e5? Well, here it doesn't matter whether black capture with the c knight or the d knight, we are going to capture this knight and black has nothing better to capture with another knight. Afterwards, white reveal this nasty idea, bishop to f4. Pinning down the knight and threatening d4. So in case of bishop to f6 or the move f6, we are definitely go ahead and play the move d4 and nap the piece. But I guess once again, you will say, hang on, I'm not a fool. I will play the move bishop to d6 not only unpinning the knight but at this point i'm a clear pawn up and now d4 doesn't work because it doesn't lose a piece right so what is the big point behind sacrificing the e pawn once again guys the ball is in your court kindly pause the video and find out nasty continuation from here onwards which gives wide a completely winning position. I hope you find this decisive sequence, namely bishop captures e5, bishop captures e5, 
and here comes the most important move of the game bam <laughs> what a move well the first thing this queen has done is it's attacking on e5 bishop but the most important part is it has pinned down the f7 pawn so that means black can no longer support the e5 bishop and once the bishop moves the most popular choice here is bishop to f6 afterwards now you see it right yup rook captures e6 boom getting our pawn back and not only that if that's the case then i'm not going to record this video but after any move let's say king to d8 or king to f8 white has a completely winning continuation if your opponent plays king to d8 then i have attached a sample line in the pgn where more or less white continue with the same exchange sacrifice which happens after king to f8 and rook captures f6 the winning blow it's very funny right because if you compare this position just before four to five moves black has a rock solid position and now his king looks very shaky and on top white has a tremendous attack just see how easily white crushed a high rated gm after following sequence queen to f6 check attacking on f6 so black naturally defend with king to e7 now instead of king to e7 if black has gone on g8 then knight to e3 is a very strong reply this knight is going to reroute to the f5 square where it will be very hard for black to defend his position okay king to e7 the most natural move comes into the picture yup rook to e1 check king to d7 and now queen captures f6 so threat is very simple we want to play rook to e7 and nab the queen something black has to pay attention immediately so he continue with queen to d6 attacking on the queen and naturally enough white nab the f7 pawn and check the black king king goes to the d8 or c6 more or less it has to face the same reply which he faced after the move king to c8 as white continue with this thematic check bishop to h3 king to b8 so at first sight it looks like black has safeguard his king but not at just an illusion as after rook to e6 black is in a completely hopeless position if queen moves anywhere as i have highlighted by the arrows then rook to e7 is a very strong reply and in the game black plays the move queen to f8 hoping that if white exchange the queen then somehow black can survive this position but as happened in many case just one move and black resigns last time guys pause the video and find out that nuke which finish off black camp okay then the decisive blow happens with yup rook to e8 boom after this black simply resigned but if some of you don't understand why black resigns well what happens if black simply take this rook well it's a big time deflection move as after queen to f4 check you can see those juicy diagonals which literally sniping the black king only move queen to e5 and after queen captures e5 it's a big time checkmate for the black king what a wonderful game and a victory by a white camp 
That's it guys. I hope you enjoy and learn this informative video on the Kings in an attack Kraken trick. Remember, play the move e5, give your opponent hope to capture the e5 pawn with this thematic move knight to f1. And once black captured the pawn, then he is not going to forget the treatment which you are going to deliver him. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on my video. And I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.